Um, I just graduated from Vestal High School and I work at PS Restaurant and I'm going to um, show you how to make homemade raviolis today and pasta. Um, so what we're going to start with is uh, we have seven eggs. So we start with one whole egg. Crack that right in the bowl. And then the rest of the eggs, which is six of them, we're just going to use the egg yolk. So when you get this, you just go back and forth like this. Um, some people have those little tools that you just like crack the egg in it and it'll like bring it out for you, but if you want to do it the true way, that's how you do it. <laughs> um, and it's part of the fun of cooking too, not using shortcuts. So we're almost set here. And then after we do these eggs, we're going to add our flour, which is a cup and three-fourths. Okay. So all of our eggs are in there, and this is my measured out flour. It's already set. Just pour this in there. I also have a tablespoon of milk that I'm going to add in there helps with moisture, and a teaspoon and a half of oil. Once we have that all in there, we're going to lock our KitchenAid and turn it on. Um, now we're going to mix this until um, there's nothing left on the sides of the bowl. Um, if it's like crumbly and you need more liquid in there, you can add a little bit of oil or a little bit more milk. You just want to keep mixing it so it forms a nice ball. I'm going to get another set of gloves. We're almost set. Might need to add a little bit more flour in here because I don't know if you can see on there, but um, it's a little sticky. So I'll get some more flour. And once this is all set, we're going to um, flour our board and knead this a little bit, and then we're going to let it sit for an hour. Um, the reason why we want it to sit for an hour covered is so um, all the glutens can settle, and um, one of the reasons why we have moisture in there is um, it allows the glutens to become elastic, so when we roll it out later, um, it's easy to roll out and not stiff. I'm just going to flour my board. You just knead the dough like this. Also, if you have kids, it's really cool to show them how to do this because um, it's fun. It's a fun activity. So once this is all kneaded, we would cover this tightly in plastic wrap um, and let it sit for an hour, at least an hour. Um, but I already have a dough all set up for us that I made earlier. I'll get that out right now. Um, we're going to save the plastic wrap because once we cut it, um, our extra dough, we always want to keep covered so the dough doesn't dry out. Um, if your dough dries out, then it's too hard to stretch it and put it through the pasta machine. We're just going to knead this a little bit. I'm going to cut this about half. 
so we can get our pieces. Make sure it's nice and flowered. Um, now I'm just going to press this out a little bit so it's almost squared. So when we put it through the pasta machine, it comes out square. So then when we form it on our um, palette here, it'll fit to the sides. Um, so we're going to use setting 0 through 4. Um, you start off at 0. You just put it through. As you put it through, it might become sticky, so you want to just put some more flour on it. Then we'll switch it to one. At first, it might be like awkward to like put it through the machine, but as you do it more, it becomes a lot easier. Then we'll move to two. <coughs> now since we're getting longer, I'm going to square it off just so it becomes thicker so it will fit on this plate. Um, the first time that Rick let me do these by myself, everything was like going good. And then once I like got it all set up on my plate and um, got them all rolled out, I went to go like get them out of the mold, and they stuck. And I was like, oh no! So um, you mess up the first time, you just learn from your mistakes and move on from there. I just didn't have enough flour in the dough when I did it, so I moved to three. Is that as you see, um, as I bring it through, it becomes um, the width becomes bigger, which is what we want. Then I'll move to four, which is our last setting. I'm going to score it off one more time just because it's not quite <coughs> as thick as I want it, the width to be. Okay. <coughs> this is perfect right here. Now as I'm going through, I see um, how long I want my bottom piece to be, so I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to make sure I flower the bottom. Make sure you always flower your equipment too, so it's nice and flowered, so it doesn't stick like it did my first time. We'll lay that on top. And then we'll go the rest of the way with this one. Okay, so we're going to make sure we flour the top of this too, just so it doesn't stick on the pasta. Mm -hmm. You're just going to press it down nice and lightly. Um, to seal the dough, um, you just beat an egg a little bit, and then that's what we're going to use to seal. So, have an egg in there. Really quick. Now today I'm showing you how to make pumpkin raviolis. Um, our stuffing has brown sugar in it, cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg, and um, ginger. Um, I use a 30 ounce can just um, so I can make a bigger batch of raviolis. Um, our serving is six raviolis, so I have my stuffing all made right here. Um, but the ingredients and how to make are on those recipe cards that were handed out. And if you didn't get one, we can get you one after as well.
Um, you see this one over there? That right? No. Okay. So this can get a little bit messy, but it's okay. That's part of the fun of making raviolis. So we just want to fill each rav up just so it's to the rim of the mold. Can you see that or I'll move this over? If you overstuff your raviolis, they're going to they'll break open and they'll burst. So you just have like pasta with a bunch of stuffing outside of the pasta. But. <laughs> Another part of learning. Um, and you can stuff raviolis um, with anything you like. You can do vegetables with any cheese you like. Just puree them up. Make sure you cook the vegetables first. Um, it's a nice way to have like a vegetarian dinner. You don't have to put meat in it. Um, if you have leftover vegetables from a pot roast, you can puree out those vegetables too, and that's a very unique flavor because you have the pot roast flavor as well. It's in a ravioli. So last part to seal it, which is another messy part, is you take your egg, you just run it around the edges. Make sure you have everywhere your they won't seal tight enough. Now we'll take our top piece and put it over top. And you want to go from the middle out, pressing to make sure there's no air bubbles because that'll also make them burst open. <coughs> That's real good. And then you can cut off your excess dough. And you can use this again when you go through to make another stretch. Um, make sure you cover this too or it'll get dried out. So I'll put it over here. Now we want to flour the top of our dough again so our rolling pin doesn't stick to it. And my rolling pin right here. And as we roll it, just cuts the shape out, the squares. I want to make sure they're all have the cutout mark. You can see the zigzag as you roll through. And then you know they're cut through and they'll pop out really easily. So we have more dough that we can use later. So we'll take this and put it to the side. Now we're ready to see how they came out. They just fall right out. They have cute little shapes. They look nice. Um, now, normally at the restaurant, I will um, freeze these after just so they're, um, when we get an order, we can take them right out of the freezer. Um, or you can put them right in a pot, which is what we're going to do right now. Um, but at home, if you don't want to eat them right away, just um, find a cookie sheet with parchment paper and flour, and you can put them right in your freezer, and they'll be ready for later. You can, um, Once they're frozen, you can bag them up because they won't be sticky anymore. Um, just make sure you lay the bottom with flour so they don't stick to the bottom. Um, now one more thing I want to show you really quick is um, when you make the dough for the raviolis, you're always going to have extra dough left over. So one other thing you can make is um, fresh pasta like fettuccine. And to do that, you just go 
right through again, one, um, zero to four. Just do this really quick. And this doesn't have to be squared because um, you're just running it through the pasta. It doesn't need to be um, a rectangle shape. It's perfect for lunch or dinner or a snack. And um, you could put tomato sauce on it or a nice butter sauce, whatever you like to have on your pasta. Mm -hmm. And if you like your pasta thicker, you could always make it thicker. I just do it. Um, to the fourth, so it's always consistent. <coughs> so once we have this all the way through, then we can go through this right here. Just gotta switch this over. And when you're done with it, um, when these come out, you also wanna make sure they have enough flour on them so the noodles don't stick together. So I'll put this right through. We have fresh pasta. And when you're done, you just sprinkle them with flour, just like that. Make sure they're all through, and then you just lay them on a sheet again, and then put them in the freezer. Okay, so I think we're ready to put these in water, and I will go over and make a nice butter sauce for um, the raviolis. This is just a hazelnut liqueur. I'm gonna get the pan nice and hot. Um, and little by little, we're just gonna add little slabs of butter until the sauce is nice and thick. One thing uh, Marissa did not tell you was when you make this, this is an egg pasta, so you have to use it that day. Like, if you leave any, it'll be green by, like in a few hours, so you need to make everything, use it all up, put it in the freezer. some toasted almonds in here. <coughs> Thank you. Almonds give it a nice flavor, that autumn flavor. Now in the middle of my plate, I'm gonna just add a little bit of butternut squash. This is cooked. Just another nice vegetable that will go good with our raviolis. Just gonna finish these up for you guys. These are already have nuts on them. Uh, more sauce? Ah, yeah, I think so. A little bit. Um, so a nice way to garnish 
this dish, since it's an autumn dish, is like I said, butternut squash, and we have our toasted almonds. Um, if you were doing an, a vegetable ravioli, you could do like arugula in the center. It has a nice flavor. You always want to garnish your dishes because that brings the plate together. Does anyone have any questions? How can you tell when the are done? Um, they'll float to the top. Anything else? Once they float, I usually let them go another couple minutes or so to see the shits. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Go ahead. I've never made any pasta. Uh -huh. So at one point you folded it in two. Mm -hmm. and put it through the same number on the machine? I did, yeah. Um, I squared it off so it would fit better on the rectangle shape. Because at the end I want it to be rectangle shaped. Oh, okay. That was the reason. Yep, that's just, you're welcome. That's just an easier way to um, get it to form the shape that I want. You could roll it by hand, but I, it would take a lot longer. And I'm not sure um, how you would act, actually be able to tell the thickness that you'd want it to be. Mm -hmm. You could, yeah, if you, wanted, if you wanted to roll them by hand. They have little cutters that looks like a, like a little wheel that you, so you can still get the edges on it. Actually, they have them with four or five of them. Yes, sir. So this is just an example of how you can present your point. They all have nuts on them. They all do. Yeah, they were right in the sauce. That's right. I'm sorry about that. And then you wanted to garnish it with some toasted nuts. Um, if you want, I can make one real quick. I have a Do you overwork pasta like when you were eating it? Overwork it. Yeah, that's why um, you just want to knead it a couple times and um, so it's not too sticky and it has a, enough flour. If it's not sticking to your hands, you know it's okay. Um, that's another reason why you want to keep it covered as well because it won't dry up as easily. You'll tell it like the dough will start cracking and then you know that it's going to come out cracked. And um, So you want it nice and smooth. Um, I did just like a shot of the hazelnut liqueur, and then um, I cut the, they're just like about this thick, and um, you just want to, I did two pieces for each, you just want to do it until it's thick, so, and when you're cooking, always taste what you're cooking too, so if you know that it tastes the way you want, then I would stop adding butter, if you want more in it, then add more, if you want a different flavor, then add whatever flavor you'd like in it. And you don't have to put liqueur in it either. You could just do butter and roasted nuts, and you'll still get that nut flavor. Like if you made um, those braised, braised raviolis like I suggested, um, you could just do a simple sauce from um, your pot roast and put that over top of the raviolis too, because that, that goes with it because you had... You have your braised beef or vegetables and um, inside the ravioli. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. <laughs>